Hello everyone, um, I just filmed the last video and I heard how bad my voice was on it, so, yep, that's great. Um, this, so, just moving on immediately, this is a video about my, um, fire star helm. It's not actually steel, it's aluminium, I can literally do that with it without it breaking my fingers off, and, yeah, we'll get to the uplifts first. So, this was used by the German firefighters, um, Probably 1960 to 1980, something like that. Um, and it was obvious it's designed after the 1934 German Civic helmet, which was also used by firefighters and police officers. Um, these are prop; they're not the rarest in the world, but they're quite uncommon in Australia because I've not I haven't seen any of these in any surplus stores, any um, antique stores, things like that. So, I think it's a nice piece. Um, this does come with um, this little thing to put on the back here. I just haven't bothered putting it in there because it stays crunched up like that. It just doesn't do much, honestly. Um, let's move that out of the way. So, this has the classic German liner from pre-war, post-war, etc. It does have this padding, I think, to make it more comfortable, but, you know. Um... This one is DIN one four nine four zero, I think. Oh, you probably can't see because the lighting is horrid, but it's there. Come on, focus. There we go. DIN one four nine four zero. Got it right. Um, it do, It's not this one. As my brother keeps making jokes about it, this is not technically a Nazi Germany helmet because it's post-war. This was. This is aluminium, not steel. Obviously, it's got a lot of scratches and a chip there, but, you know, um, I, the only thing I know that could possibly be dangerous about this is the paint is radium luminescent, or radio, radium luminescent, or however the hell you say it, um, which means it does contain a radioactive substance, but from what I've heard, it's not enough to hurt you in any way, I hope not, because I've put it on like 10 times, um, the chin strap is completely different to what you would see in normal German helmets, which is actually quite nice because it gives it its own little like personality. Um, it's got a reflective strip along here, so if the um, radio luminescence runs out, then you know you're fine. You people just have to shine a torch on you, and you stand out very easily. Um, this one did has like a green underpaint to it. And as you can see there, it's got the black interior, excuse the background noise, people are just noisy and, I and I'm a teenager, so obviously I can't have a say in it. <laughs> um, this is under size 59, it's l it's almost too small for me. Um, I, have a, I'm, I have a very large head, I'm 5 foot 10 slash 11, so yeah, I'm decently tall. Um, but yeah. The reason why I would recommend getting one of these is it's a Starhelm on a budget. So if you'd like, if you love the looks of the Starhelm, um, then this is a great way to get one for a really cheap price. Um, this one has had people use it, so it is it is basically a piece of history. I would like to say um, that oh, my, my phone camera hates me. Um, so basically, it says. Um, Hellcart, um, Rosenberg, I think, something like that, and Pig Grosh, or Grosh, or however you say it, oh my god, child. <laughs> and so it's had three people use it since the date of manufacture. It's possibly been repainted twice. Um, one, because it's got like a black underpaint underneath the green, and then it's got the green, obviously, you can see remnants of it here. It could have just been really cheaply painted, but I'd like to think it had it. Um, so this has seen some service life. I don't know what it was used for. I'm not... It obviously probably... It seems to have been just for the general firefighter because it doesn't have the red stripes or whatever the hell it used to have. It's basically just a, not, a usual nice clean... Well, as clean as you can get with a beaded up Starhelm. Um, replica fire helmet, but, um, well, it's not replica, I'd like to call it a replica, so my brother doesn't call it a Nazi helmet, um, 
Anyway, I forgot what I was saying, but who cares. Either way, I'd, I'd recommend getting one of these. This one was cost me 60. They're starting to go up for some reason, probably because they're getting old. Um, yeah, the sun going, they're starting to go up. Um, I've seen them go for about 80, 120, one in basically perfect condition for about 500. I don't know why they're pricing it like that, but they are. But I didn't want anything perfect, but I didn't want anything basically with a huge piece blown out of it. And you'll see that with a lot of my things. I'll, I'll try to get them in the best condition possible for the pro, for the budget I have. You'll see that on one of my Soviet helmets that are on the way, which I'll do a video of when it arrives. Or, depending if I did my current Soviet helmet. Oh, you can see my leg ill. Um, or my other Soviet helmet. And, yeah. Basically, I'm prioritising Soviet gear because that's the easiest stuff you can get your hands on. And, yeah, basically I just gave you a preview of what I'm doing. Um, oh well. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, um, subscribe. Give me suggestions on what, um, you should, what I should focus on. Um, check out my Patreon if you want to. There's probably nothing on it if you want the first people to view this. If you're like 10 years in the future and I still end up doing these, then... I might have a quintillion things on there. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video.